Hi everyone, if you are new to this channel, in this series of going solo videos I am using the final mission of the Dragon's Gambit campaign as a test bench for different mechs, variants and weapon loadouts. This is because this mission presents a good opportunity to explore different tactics, as well as the possibility of fighting both long and close range combat. Also, I am going into this battle by myself without taking any of my landsmates with me, so we could better assess and compare how each mech survives and performs in exactly the same type of scenario. Previously, I've shown you a bunch of different assault mechs, chassis in this kind of setting. Then I've also shown you quite a few different heavy mechs. And now, and now, before I will actually step into a medium mech territory and start testing out some uh, medium mechs uh, in this kind of mission. I would like to take some time to demonstrate and to talk about a couple of uh, heavy hero mechs, which so far I haven't shown on this channel. Before I do that, before I do that, um, I would like to talk about three problems which I have with hero mechs in general. Problems with a hero mech as a concept itself, the concept of a hero mech as such. The first problem is a fairly minor one. Minor one to some, perhaps to someone, it's not even gonna be a problem whatsoever. <coughs> that problem is... What is a hero mech after all? So, um, as far as the Battletech universe is concerned, as far as the Battletech lore is concerned, there is no mention of such things whatsoever. The hero mechs are entirely apocryphal. They are the creation of Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries game. Again, they do not uh, exist in the lore. This is just, uh, just you know, a, a Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries uh, creation. To some it may not be a problem, and perhaps uh, maybe I am just making a big deal out of it, because after all, the whole Battletech universe is just a science fiction, and if we add a bit more fiction to a science fiction, then I guess uh, it's probably not really a problem, and maybe, uh, maybe I'm just, uh, you know, making too much of a big deal out of it, and... I shouldn't probably bother too much about it, but, you know, it just kinda makes me feel kinda odd about it. But anyways, let's now talk about my second problem with hero mechs. My second problem with them is their uniqueness. What do I mean by that? The uniqueness is that you can only have one hero mech, okay? Let's say if it's a, a hero atlas, like, uh, let's say, Bory Head Atlas, there is only one Bory Head Atlas for the entire game. You cannot have a lance of four of those mech. Same story, like, let's say, with this popular uh, mech which I'm about to demonstrate, that, that Archer Agricot variant. You cannot have a lance of four of those mechs. You can only have one of them. So it's that kind of uniqueness. And the fact that there is... You know, the, the, now I'm kind of getting into the third problem. And the fact that you cannot 
modify or create out of other archer chassis or any other mech the same kind of configuration. So uniqueness is the, the second problem. Now we are getting into the third problem. So what is my third problem with the hero mechs? Okay, the third problem is the inability for us, for us, for people who are playing this Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries game, to create our own hero mech. And that is perhaps my biggest problem with it. And it's kinda something that to some extent even offends me. Because uh, there is one hero variant of the hatchback, the, uh, the hero hatchback, the one that utilizes a Gauss rifle instead of the AC-20 burst fire. And it's painted in fancy color, it looks kind of fun. It was uh, made by uh, some uh, football uh, fan, American football fan, that hatchback is painted like a f uh, food football player, the, the color scheme. I do not have this hero variant in this career, but I do have pretty much all the heroes in my other career, the one that I've been uh, playing for a much longer time. But the reason why I'm, I'm bringing up that hero hatchback is that the story behind that hero variant was something like, as far as I can remember, you, you know, in short, it was made by uh, some mech warrior who was like a huge football fan. He designed this mech for himself, but he actually he was a pretty average mech warrior. Th there wasn't really anything uh, special about him. He, 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 he was like he was some kind of pretty average mech warrior. He wasn't like, you know, super good, super gay, uh, bad at it. He's, he's just an average, okay? And uh, that is uh, something that kind of offends me and a lot of other people who are playing this game, people who are actually really good mech warriors, because that raises the question, how come uh, some kind of, you know, some average dude is able to create his own hero mech and we can't? You see, this all game is about us, it's not about them. We should have an opportunity to create our own hero mech. You know, like, let's say after you reach a certain reputation, let's say you make a certain amount of money, then you should be able to build and to customize in uh, some of the industrial hubs your own hero mech. So that is kind of like a third problem. Now, what would be a solution to all of uh, these problems? And honestly, I find the solution to be uh, actually quite simple. How about this? How about having no hero mechs whatsoever? And instead, instead, how about you give us a possibility of uh, customizing all the mechs to a much greater extent. Something uh, like uh, previous uh, mech warrior games were able to do. Um, uh, particularly, let's say, like mech warrior 2 or mech warrior 3. What I mean by that, okay, we can probably have a little bit more re restrictions than those games had. Because it wasn't always uh, quite realistic either from the lore standpoint. But, you know, we should be able to, uh, to do things like, let's say, 
customizing things like, let's say, replacing an engine, for instance, right? Upgrading or downgrading engine, like, to a heavier or lighter one, if we have it in our inventory. Let's say, uh, being able to use ender steel chassis, installing the case uh, system, all that stuff uh, was uh, possible to do in uh, like MechWarrior 2, for instance, even though it wasn't quite realistic from the lore standpoint either. There is a mod for that, of course, and I am aware uh, of that, I am fully aware of that, the popular mod actually, which is called yet another uh, mech lab. I don't use this mod because I think it's just a little bit too much, because it uses a lot of uh, exotic weapons, some exotic weapons, uh, some of them are also kind of apocryphal or like, let's say, they are from a distant future, some of those uh, weapons may not even e exist, even like, let's say, in this particular historical period, so... Maybe it's a little bit too much, maybe it's a little bit too much. But at least there you get more uh, possibilities as far as the mech cus customization is concerned, because here is the thing. Here is the thing, if you ask me, for instance, or a bunch of other uh, MechWarrior 5 players, if you ask us a question, what do we find so, fascinat so fascinating about this game, what is our most favorite aspect of it? And I'm pretty sure I can almost guarantee that a lot of people will uh, tell you that it's the ability to customize mech, it's the ability to play around with different weapon loadouts, different uh, weapon variants, you know, tweaking a mech to see what kind of results you can get with uh, particular loadouts. That is the most fun, the most fascinating thing about MechWarrior fun, or uh, sh uh, should I say, one of the most. Because, of course, what ma also matters is obviously the gameplay, the interesting story, and the interesting missions. That, of course, is, uh, you know, that, 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 of course, matters, but, you know, what uh, what makes this game different from some other games is that, you know, ability to play around with different mechs configurations. And this is something that we should be able to do here. Had we had an opportunity to customize mechs in a greater depth and detail, then the, the uh, idea of hero mechs and the hero mechs as such will not be uh, even necessary. Y you will be able to create your own hero mech like that. So this is my solution to, to, to this uh, problem, my proposed solution. And something that I wanted to really bring up and talk about uh, for a long time. All right, having said this, let's actually go ahead and take a look at some of the hero mechs. Uh, the most popular heavy hero mech is perhaps uh, this archer, the agricot. Now, what is this uh, archer? How do you get one of these? Well, for that matter, you have to complete one of the campaign missions which is called, I believe, uh, Bow and Arrow. It happens... Uh, it happens somewhere in the Free Worlds uh, League uh, territory, like H H House Marik uh, t territory somewhere there. So basically, you know, the... In short, the story behind it is, like, be be behind all this campaign is that There, 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 there was a guy who 
your character's father's friend who lost some job he's a, he's a mech warrior but he lost some job in uh, one of the elite uh, mech forces that had really depressed him and uh, to the point where he started drinking a lot he kind of became an alcoholic and then your character's father talked to him offered him a job he told him like you should stop drinking he, he basically like offered him an opportunity and a second chance in life and uh, he, he was very happy about it it, it basically you know you know uh, saved his life this way and he was so grateful for that and before he died he asked uh, his uh, uh, two ch children uh, his daughter and uh, uh, his, uh, his son two siblings to um, to pass this mech after his death to your character to you basically and the story was that uh, the, the, the sister wanted to fulfill uh, her father's will but uh, the, the, the son her brother had a grudge against uh, his father and he didn't want you to have the smeg he wanted to <clears throat> to sell it uh, he, he wanted to do whatever with it but he didn't want to fulfill his father's wish because he had a grunge he had a grunge so that's like the the, the, this, the story behind this campaign now every campaign mission uh, tries to be original unlike any other standard missions in this game and it tries to be interesting, obviously. Well, unfortunately, I cannot say so about that campaign, because, to be honest, as far as I am concerned, that, com uh, th that campaign wasn't all that interesting at all. It was kind of boring. The last mission, okay, it was somewhat original. It was somewhat original, but nothing special either whereas the first three uh, prior missions they were pretty much just standard typical missions you encounter in this game the only difference is that they were dressed up in this kind of story that is the only difference but anyways so this is how you get this mech uh, uh, when you complete that particular campaign mission Now let's go ahead and take a look at this loadout and uh, you will see what I am talking about and why, <laughs> you know, this may offend a lot of people, but why I think that mechs like this two that I am about to show you, they should be banned <laughs> simply because you get a quite an unfair advantage when piloting something like this let 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 me show you what i mean and then i will demonstrate this in a mission before let's actually uh, load the original loadout and see what this mech comes in in stock well um to begin with to begin with let's just take a look at the weapons it's got two SRM-6s, two standard medium lasers, two medium pulse lasers in the torso, yeah. two LRM-10s, uh, which are basically, you know, combined LRM-20, and then the dual streak SRM-2. Uh, the way that the Streak um, SRM-2 works, um, in, in case if you're a new mech warrior, it's basically the guided version of uh, short-range missiles. These ones, they are unguided. You have to aim very well when you're shooting the, these missiles. 
and it's difficult to hit a moving ta target with standard SRMs because the, their velocity uh, is on a slower side as compared to other weapons. Well, this uh, uh, solves this problem because they are guided missiles and to be able to shoot them, to be able to shoot them, you have to get a steady lock on target. They have to lock in on targets and only then you are able to shoot them. Otherwise, even if you press the down the trigger but you don't have a lock on target, they are not gonna sh uh, work, they are not gonna shoot at anything. Alright, so this is the original loadout, then what makes it so special, this, uh, th th this hero variant? Not just these weapons, but this Beagle Active Probe equipment. Unfortunately, not a lot of uh, mechs host this equipment. Uh, the, the only other two mechs which come to mind, which I could uh, can think of, which also incorporate this be amazing Beagle Active Probe equipment, are the two uh, Black Knight variants. Uh, the Star League era variants, uh, not the downgraded Succession Wars uh, variants. And I've demonstrated all of those variants in uh, <coughs> on this channel as well, in, in the same mission. But anyways, what this thing does, in case if you don't know, it inc uh, increases your uh, sensor ra range capability. It allows your sensor to detect targets behind the hills, behind the mountains, behind the buildings or any kind of obstacles within the 900 meter radius. It's absolutely amazing thing and speaking of that um, solution that I was talking about, my, uh, my proposed, you know, solution or expansion to the Mech Warrior 5 games, the ability to customize mechs, I wish I could uh, be able to ins somehow insert this kind of e equipment into more mechs. Uh, more different mechs types. Uh, but otherwise, you know, the... the uh, uh, as of now, the, the mech has to have a predetermined uh, slot to, to to be able for you to uh, to insert this this uh, equipment. So that's the the only problem. I wish I could use it with more mechs. That, that's my only problem. But I really really like that equipment. But anyways, anyways. So what uh, again? So this is the loadout. Here we've got like what four uh, four double hit sinks, and uh, with this uh, four double hit sinks, it can run. It can still run pretty hard because all of these short range missiles they generate a lot of heat. That's a lot of heat, and this uh, four double hit sinks aren't always sufficient. You have to manage your heat very carefully with something like uh, like this. All right, now let's go ahead, revert back to my loadout and see what I've done to this. Well, first of all, let's talk about the weaponry. I've replaced uh, uh, and downgraded all standard medium lasers and medium pulse lasers to the medium lasers short burst version. I don't even view this as a downgrade, I view the, I view this this actually as an upgrade. Because because as much as I like standard lasers and as much as like uh, uh, medium pulse lasers, even though this may generate a little bit less uh, damage on paper than any of those other lasers, they make up for it with a better firing rate. And a lesser heat generation. They produce less heat than other types of lasers. And I absolutely love this variance for, uh, for that matter. 
uh, firing rate is a very very big deal for me all right what are the other changes that i've done to this yes i did keep the original lrm 10s however i've allocated them into the arms why is that why is that well because uh th things which get knocked off most frequently are your arms they get knocked off more uh, more often than let's say uh, your torso and if something like this happens let's say if this mech loses an arm i'd rather lose one of these lrms than to lose any of the SRMs. I'd rather uh, retain the uh, close to medium range uh, uh, fire uh, firepower for as long as I can. The first thing which I would prefer losing is a, some kind of long range weapon before I start losing uh, shorter range weapons. It's just for that matter, just to be on a safer side. Then, uh, instead of taking those SRM-6s, the original SRM-6s and Strek SRMs, I just went ahead and replaced all, replaced all that stuff with SRM-4. All that combined, and I'm shooting all of this in the Alpha Strike, create SRM-16 in total. That is uh, quite a devastating power with all this uh, four medium lasers combined and together with this SRM 16th in a close range you can obliterate any kind of mech assault mech heavy mech whatever in a matter of a few seconds it takes only a couple of alpha strikes of all of this uh, stuff to obliterate any kind of mech. It's ridiculous how much uh, how much close range firepower this stuff provides. Now let's look at the internals. Well, to begin with, uh, obviously I kept in place this original amazing Beagle Active probe, which I wish I could use with more mechs in this game because the situational awareness which it provides you it's quite remarkable it leads to a much better and more informed tactical decisions in combat this is absolutely amazing and absolutely essential and then and then uh, because I've had some tonnage available through the SRM-6 downgrades and, uh, you know, those medium pulse laser downgrades. I've, uh, I, I am able to use more double hit sinks. Now I have six double hit sinks in, in total as opposed to the original four. And lastly, lastly, as you can see in here... <coughs> I've maxed out all the armor everywhere, absolutely everywhere. No compromises as far as the armor uh, is concerned whatsoever in this mech. And I just, you know, allocated everything more towards the front, which is where I'm going to be hit at the most. As a matter of fact, I would actually do something like this, you know. Yeah, so this is my build, this is my loadout. Now, I am not exactly sure what's going on with this mech internal-wise. Why, why it, uh, it is able to take so much equipment on board, including this uh, uh, Beagle Active Pro, because when you strip it of all the stuff... You see, let's strip it of uh, everything. It weighs only 21 tons. I don't know, is it like something like an endosteel chassis? I have no idea, there is no way for me to... 
to look at the internals in this game. I am not sure what makes it uh, chassis so light of this variant. Anyways, let's revert. Yeah. So it's it's very very interesting. Like I, I I've always been curious. Like why why can I take so much uh, weapons, so much gear on board, and why I cannot do so with other archer variants for that matter. All right. So this is my whole loadout and my thinking behind this loadout. And now let's go ahead and check out the upgrades and perhaps the weapon groups the upgrades as a bunch of hero mechs out there they do have a lot of upgrade slots and what i've done i reinforced all the armor the, all the internal structure all the way to the max then everything else you know basically goes towards the increase of the firing rate of different weapons and Adding a little bit of heat capacity because uh, this mech is uh, somewhat hot. Now the weapon groups. Nothing really all that fancy. As I said, I am shooting all the SRMs in the Alpha Strikes. The uh, lasers are split in between the groups of two. One in the arms, two in the torso. And then LRMs are also being shot in the Alpha Strike. It's pretty basic, pretty simple. But, but this mech has a, uh, especially in this kind of configuration, a very, very unfair advantage. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and take this mission. And now you'll see what I'm talking about. Again, no, no lance mate, just me piloting this hero mech. Right away, by any means we are able to detect targets behind any kind of it's obstacles. You see day. behind the hills, the I'm seeing that Griffon, the I'm seeing that uh, Trebuchet, no problem. And no most importantly, this Beagle, Beagle active probe allows you to retain a steady luck on these targets. This is a very important. You see, we are detecting that thing behind all these hills and we are retaining a steady lock on it. And look at the radar, you see how we can detect everything well. This is just an you know, incredible situational awareness. The Galactic Probe is my favorite equipment in this game. Let's go after this long ball. Because it's like the greatest threat so far. The grasshopper. Easy as 
that it's kind of like a mini annihilator. That's it. It's easy as that. Well, you still can. We've come too far to surrender now. So be it. Yeah, here we can see everything. No problem, we can detect New everything. You know, now I think I should probably start using my allies. That's a lot of enemies that are approaching. Wow, that's a lot of things. It's like seven of them. Eight. Eight mechs are approaching. Target at the same time. Missiles on this guy, even though I have a bunch of them. Wanna hit any friendlies? Very easy, very Target easy to the point where it gets. You see, it's like, you see, it's like the annihilator loaded with the four Lubalin ballistics. Should be a little bit more careful probably, but you see I am not even trying very hard in this mission. Because this mech is very for Let's uh, let's deal with the Marauder first. While he's being distracted, let's shoot him in the back. Has the least amount of armor. He goes. This guy. Not a problem. It's not really difficult for us. And then that catapult. We can just. Ah, they finished him. They're advancing from the back of the perimeter. Destroy them! Now perhaps I should I should use more of the Alarms. Let me actually use up use up my Alarm ammo a little bit because I've used quite a few of the uh, short range missiles. See. Yeah, I'm able to retain a good luck on those targets. Yeah, let's focus on the Zeus first. Alarms as well, and with the amount of ammunition, I am able to shoot all of this LRM 20 45, 45 times in total. There he goes. The uh, Griffon, since he's getting close, will use other weapons. But for him, New uh, let's uh, let's uh, continue using up all the alarm some. You know Oops, not a not a good fight. Target destroyed. Target This is the last wave that is, is coming. I will continue using up using up my LRM ammo 
And then I will go ahead and take a close range combat after I use all of the Let's take care of this longbow first. Let's not we'll let him to get the luck on us. There he goes. Now perhaps I should take care of this Orion, the, the, the one that shoots all the uh, long range missiles at me. Let's do that everything I've got. As far as Alarans are concerned. Now, just for fun, let's go ahead and take a close range of combat. Okay, one more round, and that's gonna be it for LRMs. Okay, that's it for LRMs. New target, Victor. The main guy is gone. Victor is going to be very quick and easy. Let's get a little bit farther away. This is it. This is it. You see? I didn't even try very hard. I didn't even try very hard, and this is what I was talking about. When the game gets that easy, it stops even, even being fun. That's why I think this mech should be banned, because it's just way, way too unfair of the advantage. No components were lost, quite a bit of armor is left. It's just, it, it, it gets kinda boring at this point piloting uh, something like this. <laughs> 21 mech kills, it's uh, something like, you know, the same uh, amount as the uh, Annihilator. And it does feel like uh, one of those uh, Annihilators, except Annihilators you can have many, this one you can have only one. This is something, you know, that really bothers me about all of these heroes, so-called. Okay, the, like I said, just a slight armor damage, no components were lost. See the repairs. You see, just just an armor. One day, pretty cheap repair. Yeah. So there is my take on this hero mech and uh, my loadout and my configuration of this uh, this variant. One might say, well, it's not really an unfair advantage because you know uh, you're being usually you're being heavily outnumbered in this game and in this mission alike normally so it's okay to have a little bit of an advantage over your um over your enemy uh, counterparts and it's fair it's fair in that regard but then again there is another problem like i was saying my problem what's unfair about it is that you cannot build a mech on your own you cannot build a mech like this yourself you cannot take you know just one of the standard stack arches or like something like this uh, arc-2r or arc-2s and turn it into something like this like just throw in that uh, Beagle active probe in it, uh, that kind of amount of double heat sinks, 
and whatever. That is unfair. That is uh, unfair. Yeah, well, so there is my take on this archer. Now let's go ahead and talk about this marauder uh, MAD BH variant. Let's go ahead and replay this mission. Let's go back in time. Hero Max. Okay, now let's talk about this another hero mech, which <laughs> just like that ar archer, which I believe <laughs> should be banned <laughs> from this game, because it's just so unfair, so, so, so unfair. So, the hero marauder, there are two of them. Actually, there is uh, this MAD-BH and there is also MAD-BH2, BH2. BH2. That uh, BH2 variant, um, I don't have it in this career, but I do have in my other career where I have pretty much every single hero mech, the one that I've been playing for a much longer time than this one. So that other BH2 uh, variant, th th that hero, you can you can purchase in the industrial hubs, and this is how I acquired it in that career. I just purchased it uh, in one of the industrial hubs. This one you can't. This one comes with the uh, Rise of uh, Russell Hague D DLC. And the way you acquire this one, you have to complete the Bounty Hunter campaign mission. It's a single campaign mission. How do you get to that mission? Well, basically, what happens is that you need to encounter enough of rival mercenaries. And you need to destroy enough of rifle mercenaries, because when you do so, you're providing some valuable intel for a sneaky guy, which, uh, uh, which is being referred to as a bounty hunter. Nobody knows his real name, and nobody ever saw his real face. It's quite a mysterious figure. And a pretty sneaky guy. And a pretty nasty guy, too. Now, once you uh, once you gather enough intel through destroying uh, a bunch of rival mercenaries, while doing so, uh, he uh, sends you some uh, fancy equipment and sometimes even some rare mech uh, variants, some rare mechs. Once you do enough of that, at one point... He uh, hires you, he offers you one mission and a non-negotiable contract where you are assisting him in a very specific kind of mission where he is being hired to, uh, to destroy uh, t t and kill uh, one uh, a son of one of the uh, higher level officials because uh, that son uh, he mistreated someone in some awkward way you cannot do so while hiring you know typical standard mercenaries because something like that would be illegal that's illegal, you cannot do that. Uh, the only way to do something like this, to eliminate one of the, you know, higher level officials, you have to do this illegally, and that is where the bounty hunter comes into play. So, he was hired for one of those kind of missions, and that mission, by the way, pays a lot. As far as I can remember, it pays something, you know, he, he pays you like 10 millions. 
to ass assist him I in that mission. And what happens there? He himself, the bounty hunter, he pilots this marauder. He, he, pilots, uh, he pilots this uh, MAD-BH variant. And uh, you are assisting uh, him with eliminating that assigned target. Once you complete that mission and once you eliminate that um, assigned target, you find out that this nasty uh, bounty hunter, he was setting you up. Yes, he, he, he wanted to eliminate that assigned target, that's why he was hired, but he, what he also, he set you up to get rid of you as well. He wants to get rid of you as well. Basically, you know, stabs you in the back like that. And then after you eliminate that main target, you have to fight him as well. And he pilots this marauder. And the trick is that you can never kill that guy. No matter what you do, like, I gave this guy a headshot and he still survived it. He still ejected. Even then, there is absolutely no way of getting rid of him. After uh, the, uh, you complete that mission like, uh, like that, he sends you a, mes a message saying, you know, that was nothing personal, it's just business. It's just business. Here you can have my marauder, and by the way, he is, uh, th this marauder is fully repaired there. Even though, you know, you basically destroyed it, it's fully repaired, and he says, I was looking to, to upgrade my mech anyways, now you, here you can have it. You know, nothing personal, it, it was just business. From now on, let's just uh, stay, uh, uh, stay away of each other. But, you know, I will also appreciate uh, if you can send me, if you will continue send me some intel on the rival mercenaries. So it ends like that. And I am thinking, wow, wow, he just, you know, basically, you know, stabs you in the back and then it says, nothing personal, just business. And then after that, he will continue to stalk you gather the uh, uh, info uh, and intel on the rival mercenaries and, will, uh, and he will continue sending you some uh, equipment uh, for that uh, matter in exchange. <laughs> That's, you know, the, the, the trickiest part. Honestly, I don't need the crap he sends me. I can purchase, the, usually I can either purchase or salvage all that stuff myself at that point of my career. All I want is just to be able to get rid of him. I don't like him to be stalking me, especially, you know, the, the guy like that. So that's the story behind this uh, uh, MAD-BH variant. <laughs> now let's take a look at the loadout. So, here was the original loadout. Three PPCs and five medium lasers. Now here is my loadout. Which is kinda crazy. I've replaced all the uh, standard PPCs with the ER PPCs. And I've uh, replaced all the standard lasers with my beloved short burst versions of uh, lasers. Because like I said, uh, like I was talking about this lasers uh, earlier in that archer hero variant i like this again not that i don't like standard lasers or medium pulse lasers i love those too but what i like about this short burst lasers is the increased firing rate even if they produce slightly less damage but they also produce slightly less heat obviously and it greatly helps uh, this mech with a heat management because ER PPC it's the hottest weapon in this game ever. Look at this, it's 9.3 points of heat. This is a lot. Three of them combined 
It's a lot of heat, so... Every other available slot I filled up with the double heat sink, as you can uh, as you can see here. How many actually uh, double heat sinks do I have here in total? I've got ten of them. Wow, that's uh, that's quite a number. That's quite a number. Now, uh, ah, and they've also got um, jump jets. And by the way, in case if you are wondering, uh, what's the deal with these jump jets in here? The burn time um, is, is quite extended, it's to, to 10 seconds. I have a mod, I have a jump jet uh, mod. Uh, I've talked about this in detail in my other video, in the video uh, which I've made about the Marauder 2. Yeah, if you're interested about uh, uh, to learn more about this jump jets uh, mod, please check out that Marauder 2 video, the 100 ton uh, assault mech, the Marauder 2, which I've tested in this mission, by the way. Please check out that uh, that video, because I don't want to talk about this mod in detail in here, because otherwise this uh, video is going to be way too long. Anyways, so this is uh, my build, and now uh, here is what's important ab about this um, BH variant or BH2 Marauder. Unlike other standard uh, marauders, it walks at 48 kilometers per hour, not 64, not 64, so it's slower. My assumption is that the reason why both of those marauders can take so much uh, weaponry on board is because it uses uh, some kind of la lighter and uh, downgraded, um, downgraded engine. That's why it walks slower. And the other uh, thing which it cannot do, uh, something that the standard Marauder can. Perhaps it doesn't have some kind of arm actuators. It cannot do a fist fighting. It doesn't have any kind of melee uh, capabilities. This is something, you know, also important to note about either BH or BH2 variant. By the way, the difference between this and BH2 variant is that BH2 has less... Um, I believe it has, like, less medium energy slots, and instead of these uh, large energy slots, it carries the Gauss rifle on top. It's got the large ballistic slot instead. Pretty badass uh, build as well. But anyway, so this is my uh, loadout. And by the way, I've also increased the armor all the way to the max everywhere. I just maxed it out everywhere and I allocated it uh, towards the front the way I usually do. Yeah, and I just, you know, fixed a little bit in here. That's just, you know, one day of armor allocation. So that, that is the build. Now let's take a look at the upgrades. Quite a few upgrade slots, you know, nine, uh, nine of them in total. These four are reinforcing the armor and structure. These three increase, uh, are increasing the firing rate of all these energy weapons. And these uh, two are, um, you know, for the better uh, heat management. Pretty much uh, s straightforward. The weapon groups. Every s single uh, uh, PPC, all three PPCs, each one of them gets its own uh, weapon group. Just like in the other Marauder, which I've shown earlier, the standard one, which I've loaded with three standard PPCs. The lasers, typically I shoot them all in the alpha strike, <coughs> except I also have the ability to shoot separately the two lasers which are located in the arms. That's my preferred way, and as I always say, I always like my, uh, my arms locked to the torso by default on all of my mechs. Uh, if I need to unlock them, I do this only temporarily. By default, they are always locked. Anyways, so this is another uh, one of those hero mechs, which I believe has a, some kind of like an unfair advantage. You will see what I am talking about. In some missions, so as perhaps in this one, 
you barely need to move around. You can just uh, destroy the targets with these three AR PPCs. They have such a great range that you can destroy targets even before they get close enough to be able to fight you back or even for you to be able to get a luck on them because those ER PPCs have the greatest range in this game they, they shoot the farthest and they, they have a really f uh, fast projectile speed much faster than the standard PPC so those are specifics of this build and you will see why I also believe that this mech has an unfair advantage so let's go ahead and take it into the battle you'll see what I'm talking about it's absolutely crazy I don't even have any doubts that I will survive this mission piloting something like this on my own without any of my land space no come on five medium lasers and three ER PPCs what I am gonna do, I will just stay this around here and for. snipe things. It's day for the Let's just for the clear this trees. the families we've lost and the ones that remain. To get a better view. You speak it doesn't have a, uh, that Beagle active probe, obviously, unlike that archer, but it will make up for it with a huge range. And Beagle active probe won't detect targets at such a great distance, anyways. You see, I destroyed that Assam even before it was able to fight back, to fight me back. Jagger mech. There he goes. Okay, now let's take care of this guy. Incoming missile. So we can catch that. Do you, do you really think you can do something to me? Are you trying to jump on me? No way. That was very stupid of him. Alright, let's finish with this guy. Right. They are shooting at me, but I have enough armor. I can do something like that. And now, what do we get there? The Orion. Yeah, we just need to clean up this uh, this field in here a little bit, and then it should get much easier. He's pretty much done. Too far for medium lasers. Stupid tanks, stupid th tanks. What are they thinking? What are they thinking? Do they really think that they can do something to me? Come on. Seriously. Uh, what's going on in there? The longbow. Okay, let's deal with the longbow. Let's get close to him because. Yeah, that guy can, can do a significant damage to me. So let's get into his minimum range. He's not doing so well, by the way. He's about to lose his arm. This is where... How Liao? Give me the break. What, what How Liao is doing in, in here? <laughs> How loud? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? What a joke. What does How Liao has to do with this war? This is unbelievable. New 
Yeah, target. this is what I'm Enforcer. gonna do from now on. I will just, you know, snipe all these things at a ridiculous range. You see, this is how easy it is to go. As a matter of fact, maybe I just should go back to that more secure location. Yeah, there is another one coming from over there. I can't even get a luck on them. It's so far. There he goes, as easy as that. Who is next? The, looks like the Orion. Let's deal with Orion. There he goes, must have gotten a headshot. You see, this is what I am talking about. This is how ridiculous this, uh, this mech is. It's not even fun at this point. You know, when it gets that easy... It's not even fun anymore. Anyways, let's continue. Who is next? I don't even have to move much around. I can just you know, stay here. And they will all come to us. Let's just you know, clean up all these trees. Okay, any, any, anybody else out there? Come on. Why is it so slow? It's been very busy and now it's kind of down to nothing. Anything else? Okay, there, 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 there something, you know, finally shows up. The catapult. Okay. Let's disarm him first. Actually, you know what, let's get rid of him. I'm not even gonna bother with disarming him. Or I guess I, I, I can probably knock off his uh, LRM launcher. Now he's just a toy for medium lasers. He goes. Someone just shot PPC at me. On the side. That's the grass They're advancing from the back of the perimeter. Destroy them! We'll deal with him. What a sneaky guy! How did he? How did he find me? Oops, wasn't a good shot. Let's get a better view of him. comes another wave. I am not even trying all that hard. Here. Okay, there, there are other mechs. You see how far they are? Yet I can still hit them with the ERPPCs. Which is ridiculous. They are so far. And I believe I, I, I do still hit them. It's like more than uh, it's more than a kilometer away. You see, he's he's getting hit. Oh, there is something closer, but no. Let's let me actually get rid of the suits because he's got all rims. Let's deal with the Zeus first. He's about to go. Running a bit hard, but it's manageable. There he goes. Who was that? Who was that? Must have been that uh, Banshee. Battle for or uh, Thunderbolt, yeah, he's got PPC. Okay. We'll deal with him. We'll deal with him. Okay, 
he's lost something. Okay, he's about to go. I disarmed him. And we have this. Where was that Zeus? That I was. Ah, I think I took him down. Let's work on this bunch, I guess, now. Who is that? Who is that? Oh, it's, uh, it's that little guy. Oops. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, keep walking this way instead. Oops. He's too weak. He's too weak. And time to slow. Only 48 kilometers per hour. Come on, come on, we have a lot of things uh, in here left. What are you talking about? It's other marauder. How come he, he's got to close? Oh, oh man, he's in a horrible shape. He's about to go. I don't even need to shoot three New targets, marauder. Target destroyed. Target then, acquired. Who is this Victor? Oh, that's a joke. He goes. Uh, who is it? The Orion. Another Orion. Believe it or not. Another Orion. We have a lot of them. Yeah. They finished him off. Uh, there is somebody else uh, down there. Let's Get a better view of things. Uh, who are they fighting? I don't think I, I, I see. Uh, those are our tanks. That thing. Oh, it's uh, that must be that assassin. Yeah, I destroyed him. No, did I? No, he's still running. He's still. Ah, and then there is. Uh, th that's us. That's Picking us. up another yeah. heat signature in the vicinity. So it was you this assassin. Critical. And this is the final way. This is the final way. Don't worry. We will accommodate you. Then what are you waiting for? Here Come they on. are. Here they are. That's longbow. Let's start working on the longbow as the first priority. Let's not let him to come close to us. Because that thing is dangerous. We've already destroyed one. One of those. Okay, he's getting hit. He's getting hit though. Like he's get definitely getting. Hit. Yep. Running a bit hard. Just trying to to finish him as soon as possible. That's why I'm running hard. That awesome, the, the main guy who comes. Okay, let's let's start working on the main guy. Okay, okay, he's getting hit. Definitely getting hit. I need a bit 
cut. A bit of a problem. The Victor. Let's take the awesome horse. It looks like his center torso is already in a bad shape. Yeah, knocked off his arm. There he goes. Uh, I should probably take care of the Orion first because he's got missiles. It's over for you. Target acquired. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. I don't want to get any of those alarms. Let me cool down a little bit. And then we'll start finishing him off again. Okay. See, his center torso is in a horrible Incoming shape. Missile. That was a miss. Legion reinforcement set. Stand by. He goes. Oh, I think I've got one AC-20. No more AC-20 for this guy. Don't shoot at me, AC-20. This is what you get when, when you shoot the AC-20 at me. No more SRM for you either. Yeah. I disarmed him and now let's take care of this remaining. We've got the re reinforcements, but we don't need them. We don't need them. We'll deal, uh, we will deal with them anyway. There he goes. You see? This is what I was talking about. I was kind of sloppy, you see, but, but, but I still have enough armor. I mean, a little bit of armor left. I destroyed a bunch of things even before they were able to get a steady luck on me. Not all of them, but a lot of them. There is no telling where the next were destroyed before they could even get Return close enough. Ship and, and that's exactly, you know, when I am what I was talking the about. The unfair advantage of this, uh, of this hero mech variants. I don't even care about, you know, the summary, the, the results. Archon Twenty mech kills, just you know, pretty close to uh, to other marauders uh, and that marauder two and awesome, whatever, whatever. I don't care to be honest this time around because th th this is this hero mech, you know, the hero. Okay. Just an armor repair, I'm sure, yeah. Just an armor. No components were lost. Yeah, so there is my take on these two hero mechs, this absolutely ridiculous hero mechs that give you somewhat an unfair advantage depending on how you look at it but again again i said this before i will say this again my final verdict we don't need any hero mechs okay all we need is the ability to customize mechs to customize them to a greater extent to have more ability to customize them and to be able to build our own hero mechs, like the variants which I've shown, we should be able to do something like this ourselves. We don't need all of those, uh, you know, fancy, unique, one of a kind uh, hero mechs. All we need to do is the ability to build something like this ourselves. And to take, you know, just, you know, a standard. Mech chassis, standard archer chassis, standard marauder chassis, and to be able to downgrade or replace certain components, you know, changing engines, to be able, you know, to build something like those variants which I've just shown you. 
This is the way I view something like this. Mech Warrior 2 or Mech Warrior 3 didn't have uh, he any hero mechs because uh, they uh, they allowed you they I uh, allowed you to customize mechs to your liking. Sometimes, sometimes it was uh, kind of wild and unrealistic. Maybe, you know, we, co we could do something like this here, except, you know, with a bit more restrictions and uh, s something that would have been a little bit more realistic than that. I if, uh, if these uh, hero mechs are realistic after all. All right, all right. Well, thank you so uh, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you've learned something. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Please let me know what do you think of this hero mix. Uh, would you agree with me? I I if not, that's okay too. But like I said, I do believe that instead of the hero mix, we just need to have. Uh, the ability to customize mechs. Okay, well, this is it. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next one. Have a nice day.